Hello. With NDS, we have made some updates on the NDF digestibility and the calculations to achieve for us to, to get the results for the, the NDF digestibility with the NDFDs. And today we have Miliano Raffernato, who is part of the Rumen Group, to review that, and also Kurt Kotantz, who's now working with the NDS North America Group, is on too. We're going to cover that. So, Miliano, you want to take off and show us what what uh, the update looks like? And yeah. So, hi everyone. Uh, so, we are here on a uh, on a feed uh, characterization of the carbohydrates page. So, in this case, is a it's a corn silage from the uh, from the rumen feed library, where obviously you have all the carbohydrates in one page. So I want to start from these uh, just to first of all highlight how much progress there's been in the last few years uh, relatively to NDF. Okay, so the the biggest step forward that we we started was a few years ago when we introduced the UNDF. 240, which basically represents the indigestible fraction of NDF, which used to be estimated using these 2.4 factors, which is still there in the page of the carbohydrates. But we also have the UNDF 240 again now to replace uh, this value. Uh, so this is this has been already a big step forward because the lignin times 2.4 used to underestimate that indigestible fraction most of the times. So now we have a more dynamic indigestible NDF across uh, forages. Now that the presence of the um, UNDF 240 has allowed us to better estimate a rate of digestion for the B3 fraction. So the B3 fraction, which is basically the NDF minus the indigestible fiber, is basically the, the fraction that is available to the microbes to be uh, fermented, okay? So if we go to the NDF digestibility page, we see this table with different time points, okay? So more than, I think it was five years ago in 2015 when uh, NDS implemented uh, one of the works uh, that I did at Cornell, where we were able to uh, estimate the KD of the B3 fraction using three time points, okay? So these are the three time points that we've been using now for a few years that most labs uh, have made available through their uh, report. Now, a few weeks ago, we actually have uh, updated uh, this, uh, the model that we had there uh, since a few years um, in terms of accuracy and, and precision. So uh, from an input point of view, uh, not much has changed, but from an output point of view, something has changed. So I just wanna uh, go through an example here. So right now we are on a corn silage of the Rumen feed library, as I mentioned before. And obviously the outputs that we will see uh, will depend on the time points that we input. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's follow an example here. So assuming actually this is a, assuming this is a very high quality uh, corn silage, and these are actually uh, real numbers. So once I input the three time points, the, the new calculator uh, will actually calculate an aggregated KD, which is the one that the CNCPS will use in the background. Okay, so this KD will automatically replace the KD that is already in the feed specs. Now, besides this KD, which again, this is the KD that is used by the biology of the CNCPS. So the calculator will also show other information. Okay, so a few years ago, uh, we've seen that a two-pulse model for the B3 fraction actually describes much better uh, what the rumen ferments. Um, so we assume that there is basically a faster pool and a slower pool in the PDNDF fraction. And in this case, you'll see that the, the fast pool is, is bigger than the slow pool, and you can also see this from the uh, from the figure here. So the red line represents the fast pool, the blue line represents the, the slow pool, and then this flat line represents uh, the indigestible fraction. And the sum of the three uh, will basically uh, be represented by the green uh, line with the three time points that we use uh, from the lab uh, report as input. So here you, you also have uh, a summary of the information, again, with the, all the pools, uh, size, and rates, and then the aggregated KD, uh, they will be used by the uh, by the CNCPS in the background. So the information now is extremely important, even if it, at this stage is still not used by the model for various reasons. 
So first of all, there is a practical reason that version 7 of the CNCPS, so in the future, these pools, the fast and the slow pool, will replace uh, the single pool that we use for the for the B3 fraction. So we need to get used to, to deal with this type of information. Uh, then uh, the other more uh, biological reason is that uh, there is starting to be some data coming out from various studies where people have been measuring these two pools showing that higher quality forages, uh, the size of the respective pools drive the intake of the animal. So obviously for lower quality uh, forages, the size of the indigestible pool will be the one driving uh, the intake. Right? So the, this information needs to be kind of uh, uh, considered by the user when we need to, uh, to make some uh, uh, assumptions or considerations regarding what happens you know, with the cow. Besides these three time points, another difference with the previous calculator is that actually now we can input extra time points available uh, from, the, uh, from the labs. So at this stage, uh, there are some labs already reporting a 12 hours uh, time point. Right now, the prediction of the curve is done by assuming a specific uh, time point, a specific residual NDF at 12 hours, okay? That time point is basically an average, uh, more or less, of what would happen before the 30 hours, okay? Now, I want to show you, in this specific case, how the presence of the 12 hours time point can actually change uh, things. So, look at the aggregated KD, and then look at the proportion of the two pools and their respective rates, okay? So, the and again, this is a real uh, case where we had the 12 hours time point. In this case, it was 33.4. So, you'll see that there is a, a drastic change uh, in what happens for both the KD, the aggregated KD, and the proportions of the, of the pools. So, in this case, there was a uh, basically a, a drastic decrease of the KD, aggregated KD and then a change in the proportions of the pools. Now, somebody might ask, yeah, but why this big difference in the two versions with and without the 12 hour, 12 hours time points? So the 12 hours time points, it's a kind of a, uh, a very sensitive number that we might need to use in the field. So if we know, if we believe that this is a number that is, that is coming from a reliable uh, lab with good accuracy and precision, then we should definitely use it. Otherwise, like in this case, it can also take us to some wrong conclusions. The reason why this number is sensitive is because when we run an in vitro to measure these numbers, sometimes at 12 hours, the fermentation is not stable yet. So this number may actually be a little bit more variable from a lab point of view than the other three numbers. Obviously, uh, if I use only NIR values, the variability of this number will also result in uh, um, invariability of the NIR calibration. Now, there is also a warning sign that uh, will come up on the calculator when we believe that one or more of these uh, NDF digestibility time points actually doesn't really fit well uh, with the model. So I just want to show you, you know, a drastic change in these four time points, and you will see this sign appearing, saying basically that one or more digestibility values are not consistent with the uh, with the calculation model. So I'll show you the case, for example, of a um, of an alpha alpha tailage, uh, where things, as you know, uh, will be different. So this again is, is a, a real Simple. So you can see that there was, as expected, uh, a huge increase in the indigestible portion of the uh, of the NDF from this forage, and then uh, a high uh, KD, aggregated KD, with a, a very high large fast pool and a very low slow pool. Now a lot of the alpha alphas that we have out there are actually similar to these uh, numbers, with most of the times very low slow pool. So another example I could show very quickly is of a of a grass silage, which in some cases is also similar to pasture sample. So again, this is one of those cases with uh, an extreme uh, situation in terms of uh, pools. So again, very high uh, fast pool and very small uh, slow pool. Uh, so obviously the uh, the KD is 9.3, which is not an extremely high KD, 
but considering that the indigestible fraction is very low, um, the fermented or the fermentable B3 fraction is very large. Okay, so let's not get confused uh, with the, uh, you know, judging forages based only uh, on the KD. Okay, uh, the KD is a fractional rate, so it's a percent per hour. So the amount, the absolute amount of the fermented uh, B3 fraction will basically be decided by the amount available of the B3 fraction, which in, in this case um, is very large. Dave, I'm not sure if you have uh, questions. So you've, you've loaded the three time points in. What happens when you put the 12 hour now in? Because we're not seeing, so can we put a 12 hour in one of the fast ones? Yeah, you want to give me a number for this case? Uh, what would you? So the 12 hour would be on a good pasture sample, it would be really rapid. So should we put in uh, 55? Yeah, so 55 actually in this case uh, did not change a lot the, the information, but you know, uh, I can assume that it did improve accuracy and precision of what we had before, okay? So, especially again in those forages where we expect a large uh, fast pool, uh, like, you know, alpha alpha or grass allergens or pastures, the presence of the 12 hours is uh, important, okay? So, if we know that the lab as that value available, uh, let's uh, let's put it. Obviously, you know the 12, 12 hours time point can also be very useful in other forages, like that corn silage that I uh, showed at the beginning, where the extra time point actually changed the uh, the calculation results. There is a tab as well that I um, didn't mention, uh, which is this one here. And the FOM pools, so just on the right of the calculation tab, uh, which basically gives you uh, a summary of the respective pools on NDF basis or dry matter basis with their respective rates. Uh, and then NDS makes also some assumptions on the passage rate, setting it at 1.7% uh, per hour and it gives you uh, what the NDF digested should be as a percent of NDF and as a percent of dry matter um, so in the rumen and then it gives you also a total tract NDF digestibility based on a what the CNCPS assumes which is a five percent uh, digestibility uh, in the hindgut so in this case as you can see there is a very small uh, difference because obviously we don't expect uh, much happening uh, in the large intestine. Okay, so what what we're finding is that the 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 better the forage, especially in alfalfas, the more the twelve hour will speed up the the calculated KD for those forages. Yeah, and also uh, the other thing is that if we look at the family, you know, are all the samples of corn silages. Uh, obviously, we have we can have a high variability in terms of quality. Okay, so the within the corn silages family, the the 12 hours will kind of highlight the better ones compared to the rest. So if we think that we have above the average corn silage, then we should definitely use the 12 hours time point. So just as a uh, so I've got a a haylage with an NDF of 38, and then the 12 hour was 36.8, the 30 was 42.4, 47.5, and 49.4. Would be interesting just to look at that example, maybe with and without the 12 hour, and and just review that because that would be, you know, those are haylages from one of the labs that's reporting that. So with the 12 hour, we're at 18.8 8 
and the fast pool is 40 and the slow is 8.5 oops okay so so now without the 12 hour we're at 9.3 so those feeds with a i was working with that as we discussed that and so the alfalfas have a large uh, kd difference in the fast pool yep so as we're working with those the 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 labs that are bringing those putting on those samples in the XML, those are directly imported, so users can see that by going to the NDF digestibility page um, to see if the 12 is included in the calculation. Yeah, let's let's remember that this aggregated KD will uh, automatically be imported into the, the specs of the feed. So in in this case, as you said, it's 9.33 without the 12 hours. And with the 12 hours, which was 36.8% of NDF digestion, uh, it will actually double to 18.8. .8. So that's obviously a huge uh, difference for this uh, for this uh, forage. And so it didn't. It doesn't change the pool's size, but it changes the rate on that which is uh, tremendously important, especially as we're talking with alfalfa, the, the filling and then the digestion rate there of that uh, potentially digested fraction, the fast fraction. So looks like a really nice uh, addition and a better calculation. So appreciate all your work. Um, anything you want to say in summary? No, basically I, I just, uh, uh you know, would like to see uh, more data coming from the uh, from the labs and from the users. So, if you if uh, the users would like to share their uh, experiences or you know considerations or comments, uh, you know, we here at, at Room and we're always uh, happy to to hear that. Yeah, and as I've seen so far, it's it's a uh, made it a. Uh, some differences in some of the milk production, you know, some of the dairies that uh, we're feeding some of this haylage actually show a pound or a little over a pound of milk difference. So interesting and appreciate all your work. And um, we'll close it up with that. Thanks a lot.